everybody ellie here nice to see you all hi everybody everybody can hear me yes okay uh you cannot hear me i think uh, everybody else can hear me right yes okay good uh so we are starting today chi talk hi germaine hi bart it's been a long time since i've seen you <laughs> Claudia. I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Uh, we can hear you. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. We can hear you, Edward. But mute yourself. You, you need to check your connection or your sound. So let's, let's start. Um, today we're talking about, well, first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Ellie Cohen, I'm a medical Qigong practitioner, energy healing coach. I've been uh, teaching for many years Qigong and self-healing practices. And today we're going to talk about um, the difference between Neigong and Qigong uh, and, how it, and why would you be interested to know about it? What, 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 is, it, uh, what is it to you? Uh, and uh, talk about how it's connecting with our daily practice and with healing energy. And uh, I'd like to start with a little bit of... Uh, kind of like a little ceremony, opening ceremony. So let's do some acupressure. Uh, let's actually take three fingers. So start with a little bit of uh, three fingers and put them on the temples and massage lightly the temples and taking a deep breath and exhale from the mouth. Yeah, and this is uh, this area, a triple warmer very important for governing temperature, the heart, the immune system, and just light pressure and circle around the temples, and just release mental tension. Just before we start, a few couple of minutes of some energy practice. Exhale from the mouth, inhale, slow, Deep inhalation and exhale. Now let's take the fingers, the three fingers, to behind the head, the base of the skull, and just rotate here and move the head up and down. Breathe into the area where you circling the, yes, this is the base of the skull. There's two indentation here. And these are, these points are called the gates of consciousness. It's really, really good for immune system. So we're gonna do for some immune system acupressure. And also release mental tension if you're, if you have some thoughts that are, keep circling in your mind. This is a way to kind of reset it exhale from the mouth would be a way to release that energy so on the exhale you just let go of that energy and let's move the fingers a little lower to the neck the mid mid portion between the shoulder and the skull and massage here on the outside the two muscles that uh, hold the neck and this again very good for immune system so we'll do some immune system practices in preparation for our yeah, workshop. We have on the August 9th, we have a workshop about immune system. And let's move one head, one the ear to one shoulder and rub that area here. And go back and forth across one shoulder with the ear. Then do the other side. Rub this point, bladder, bladder meridian. Nice and relax. Let's roll the head a little bit. Release tension. So just do full circles while you're feeling the weight of the head. And then the other side. Nice until the chin comes to the chest. Take a deep breath into the base of the skull. Exhale, lift the head up. 
Hmm, nice. And roll the shoulders a little bit. Open the heart center. Now when the mind is calm, you can really slowly open the chest and feel how the chest here stretches as the shoulder go back. Just put attention, mindfulness, put attention on the area. And as you open the chest, let's do it in slow motion. As you open the chest with rolling the shoulder back, just do it in slow motion. When you do it in slow motion, the breath can be a little slower, a little deeper. And as you open the chest, you just breathe in good energy into the chest. Good energy, just positive, joyful energy. into the chest. So you breathe it into this area here. Joy and smile and positive chi flowing. And you can see it in a, in a, in a, in a, in a color. If I say the word joy and love and good energy, is there a color that comes to mind? If not, is it a felt sense that comes to mind? Let's say love. Like what does it feel like? to inhale joy, to inhale love. Like what does it feel like? Or if you see something on your, maybe you smell something, maybe a love or joy has some scent. Maybe it's roses, inhale it into the chest. Maybe a memory of joy and inhale it into the chest. Nice, just immerse yourself in that practice, slow breathing, attention, visualization, intention. Nice and relax. All right. How does it feel? Feels good soaking the chi. So basically what we did, we did Neigong and Qigong combined. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's explain a little bit because um, I found that a lot of people nowadays, uh, there's a lot of uh, a big surge of people practicing Neigong and, uh, and it's kind of like a new, a new thing after Qigong. So let's explain. So basically Qigong is energy practice, a big umbrella. And under this umbrella, uh, it's, it's a big term. Qi is life force energy. And life, Qi, uh, your attention is your energy. You're putting your attention in this chest. The energy goes there. Put your attention in the and here the energy goes there and there's the quality of attention. So, so energy is really uh, a very large, uh, it's a term that just say energy. Yeah, it's, it's life force energy and energy combines of our attention, our intention, the quality and the quantity of our attention and intention. So the, the, it's very important to be acquainted with these two, um, two terms, yeah, attention. And attention is your, Attention can be scattered. Attention can be general, like you can think about the whole area of the chest, or attention can be very sharp and focused, like I'm focusing on a specific point in the body, like on the tip of the nose, and I'm, I'm there for a very strong period of time, and that's intense concentration. Yeah, so that's, that's a very different attention than in very general area. Yes, yeah, so that your power, the power of your energy is based on how, how attentive can you be. And that's, uh, that's one aspect of chi, of energy. The other one is your intention, yeah, or the, the quality. So we say quantity of your chi is more like your attention and how strong is your attention? How is it general? Is it scattered? Like sometimes throughout the day, we are very scattered. And that really takes our energy quality down. So when we are focused, like multitasking is the opposite of, of uh, having a good chi. Like when you're doing all kinds of things at the same time, it really scatter your energy. Yeah, you're very scattered. You're not, uh, you're actually depleting more of your energy. And when you are honed on one thing, uh, it's actually freeing up your mind. So the focus, uh, a, co a concentration practice, is a way to develop your chi to a higher level. And then that's the quantity, the quantity of your energy that you can get into a, a big, uh, a, a high, high uh, level of energy. And then your intention is the more of the quality, 
the quality of your energy. So the quality of your energy is your, you can say your emotional state. So intention can be like when we inhale love and joy and how love feels like, you know, love feels different than strength or vital vitality, or it could be different than, um, than peace, or it could be different than anger. Anger is a very different type of energy than peace. Yeah, it feels different. And so that's, that's the, the quality of the energy. What is the quality of your energy? And what is the quantity of your energy? So that's, that's in general, that's life force energy. Your energy is mixed up of your, uh, the, the, the attention and, and intention. And so, so that's, that's in general, that's qi and qi gong. Gong is just a, a, a practice or work, or it means cultivation or some work that you do. So qi gong, uh, my, my work in cultivation, my uh, culti cultivating my energy. So what's nei gong? So, so you, you don't want to, uh, uh, so nei gong, nei means internal, internal work. Inter so what internal work, so, so Qigong, so Neigong is really under Qigong because we cannot do Qigong without doing Neigong. The qi Qigong, so then we have to separate it into actually two different terms. What one is going to be Nei practice, internal practice, and outside practice, Why practice, Why W-A-I. And then we call in Chinese, they call it Wai Dan and Nei Dan. And so you can say Nei Gong and Wai Gong. That would be a little bit more appropriate than saying Qi Gong and Nei Gong because the in Qi Gong en encompass Nei Gong and I'll explain it. So, and why is it more very, very important for, uh, for self healing to understand this difference? Because uh, why, why, why or external energy is, is uh, like jogging. Like I can jog outside or I can lift weights I can do something with, or like rolling the shoulder or rolling the head. That's an external practice. So we call it why done. External elixir. Done is elixir. So external elixir. So you're getting some benefit from moving the head like this. You're getting some, yeah, you're getting some uh, opening of the, of the neck vertebrae. You're stretching some meridian. So that's a benefit that you get from a physical practice. From jogging, you're getting benefit yeah your heart rate uh increases and maybe you're going to strengthen your heart over time so that's a, a pure why done practice so like putting your headphones on and going for a run that's a pure why done practice external practice there's no internal energy involved and then nei done or nei gong some people say nei gong uh internal elixir is uh, all the energy that you're doing internally, like the breath, so the visualization, intention and attention. It's something that you cannot see with your naked eye. So you always see it in internally. Yes, so when you are, when I do this practice and I breathe, you don't, you don't see. So things that you don't see with the naked eye, uh, that would be internal practice. Like if I have a visualization, I breathe in positive energy or I smell like roses or I visualize a vision that is in line with my intention, that would be a nay done practice. So, uh, so nay done or a practice of gratitude or so it's a, all the practices of mindfulness, being aware of what I think, what I feel and changing it or deciding to do this with my mind or that with my mind or this with my heart or to connect with things differently or to breathe differently. So all these things that are not physical are called nei, nei gong or uh, nei dan, uh, internal elixir. So what's, in, what's interesting about qigong is qigong, the practice of qigong is meant to bring you into balance. And balance is taking Wai Dan and Nei Dan and mixing it. So this is really the benefit of the practice of Qigong. And it's very important to understand that uh, the Nei Dan practice is very, very important. So if we say that on one hand, a Wai Dan practice or external practice would be like jogging without thinking about 
what you're doing. You can listen to the news and run. Yeah, so you're not really engaging. The mind is not engaging with what's going on internally. That's going to be the extreme Waidan. And then the extreme Nadan practice is going to be sitting meditation. Like doing a meditation and sitting and moving your energy in the body or focusing on gratitude without any external movement. That would be, so a meditation practice would be a complete internal a Nagong, a 100% Nagong practice. So the Qigong, what's more very special about Qigong is that we mix Nei Dan and Wai Dan. We mix internal energy and external energy. So, so when we move, there's something very important. When we move the shoulder, when we do physical movement, the subconscious mind goes to the area that is moving. When you're moving the neck, the subconscious mind notice, hey, something is happening here. Yeah, and when I induce chi, attention and intention, or gratitude, or I see the vertebra, the vertebra is very healed or healing, that, that kind of like, it's almost like doing more than just, than just, uh, than just the physical benefit or than just the, the sitting benefit. A lot of time in meditation, you can do a lot. You can cultivate. When you do a pure nadan practice, like you're sitting, meditating, cultivating, you can cultivate a lot of concentration. You can cultivate the visualization very clear because you're sitting, you have time. And this is why in Qigong, we're moving very slow so we can induce the nadan practice. If we do things very fast, it's really hard to engage the mind. So the slow practice does multiple things it actually uh, allow the breath to go slower. When the breath is slower, the mind calms and you can focus on what you're doing with your mind. Yeah, with your, with your, uh, with your attention, with your uh, attention can be stronger. Yeah, so the, the, the slow movement is really to uh, cultivate more awareness. If I move the neck very slow, I can feel, oh yeah, here, I feel this point very much. So when your energy, when your attention is very strong in the area that you're moving, you actually creates more chi there. Because when the energy goes, when your mind goes, the energy follows. So if I think about, we say that the blood follow the, the attention. So if you, and they did it on, on uh, uh, um, yeah, there's an experiment on this. So, so if you, I, I tell you, hey, think about your left arm, there's more blood going to flow into the left arm. So there's more blood, there are more oxygen are going to go to this area. So if you focus on an area, the energy, the blood, the, the oxygen will go to this area. This is why pain is very interesting because pain is actually the body tell you, hey, I need attention there. I need your your attention there, right? But what happens with pain is that when you go to this area, you usually have an aversion from it. You don't like it. The subconscious mind, you feel pain somewhere, you don't like it. The subconscious mind says, I don't like it, I don't like it. And there's, and that's the quality of the energy. So you feel the pain, it's very annoying to you, but you're not really, really healing it. So then the, that's a very important, the, the, the combination of attention and intention. So when I go to the area of pain, wherever it may be, and so I, I actually move the chi to this area, what is, my, what is the quality of my energy? It could be curiosity. Like, let me see what's really going on. What is this pain? It's just a sensation. It's nothing, it's nothing uh, you know, we call it, we label it as pain. Yeah, we label it as pain. But if you think about pain and pleasure are both very similar because they're both just intense sensation. One we like, one we don't like. But when we go to the sensation and see it as a sensation and be curious about it, it starts, the, the reactivity of the mind start to, yeah, the, 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 the mul 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 multiplication of the, what we call pain stop to be there. Yeah, so we move the chi, or we can focus on sending love to this energy, to the to this area. So this so this is how um, we can move it too. If it's in the shoulder, 
or we can massage the stomach or wherever it is, wherever it might be. So the combination of, of energy, of, of uh, why done, of uh, external practice and internal and yang. So you can see the external practice is yang and the internal, the nei, the nei gong practice as, as, as yin. And the combination is really what, what makes uh, qigong qigong. Otherwise, otherwise, it would be just exercise. That's the difference also between qigong and just exercise. So there's a lot of um, qigong teachers that just teach you the movement. Yeah? And it has very physical benefit to stretch. And, it, and sometimes yoga, they do like that. Yeah, you stretch, you breathe a certain way. And the physical, and you, you get benefit. You get a lot of benefit. But the specialty about Qigong is that we're inducing mind, we're inducing intention. We move our attention consciously, not just, uh, not just moving the body. And then uh, the combination between uh, the internal practice and the external practice, when they are equal, yeah, that's what makes Qigong Qigong. That's what makes our practice practice. So a lot of people is popular now saying, oh, I'm practicing Nei Gong and not Qigong it's really uh, then that's fine that's more like a sitting meditation or a standing posture just standing and moving the energy in the body and there's a lot of benefit to it too there's a lot of benefit to just physical practice and there's a lot of benefit to just meditative practice but qigong is really where they both meet and this is what uh, makes it very unique and um and so it's very important to strengthen ourselves in the name done and the nay done the done done means elixir so done elixir so internal elixir why done ex external elixir is like uh, the juice <laughs> you know so you're getting a uh, benefit from both so hopefully that makes kind of sense and uh i you know this the purpose of this is to kind of share and educate and de delve you deeper into the practice and also open to questions. We started with like a Q and A uh, about any topic or about even this topic that we're talking. So I, I'd like to, in the rest, to kind of open, open it to you and you can just unmute yourself and, um, and, and, and jump in. If you have a question about this, about this concept, go ahead. Hi, Jermaine. Hi. 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 Good to see you. Yes. <laughs> I want to say to you, um, my in my experience, when we do Qigong, which is for me meditation in movement, like you came to explain, <laughs> <laughs> I have the impression that it's much easier to calm your mind <coughs> than uh, with an, what kind of other meditation when you try to calm your mind, the more you try, the more difficult it becomes. <laughs> 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 and uh, with Qigong, it, it's, it goes just like that. Mm -hmm. You are immediately uh, in, it's calm here. That's yes. what I want to see you. That's my experience. That's beautiful. That is beautiful. Yeah, thank you for sharing yeah. that. Yeah, it's, this is, this is, uh, yeah, <laughs> I think that there's a lot of people that have, um, that have problems with sitting meditation. And it's very hard to do and very hard to make them self sit and meditate. And uh, uh, there's also stagnant energy can be built up. And when you're moving, there's uh, the energy is moving and you can feel the energy is moving. And then you can also being participate in the movement of energy. And that's really what draw me, what drew me into Qigong. And I think it's very accessible and um, uh, yeah, that's that's great. That's so awesome, and I know that you've been uh, really having a lot of benefit from it, from the practice, and you're sharing it too, which is so great. 
Uh, thank you so much, Jermaine. <laughs> and uh, anybody else wants to share something from their experience? If they want to add something to what I said, or yeah, Bart, go ahead. The, the stage is yours. You have to unmute yourself. Yeah, okay, okay. good. Okay. Um, my question is, uh, what has uh, Negong, has it something to do with uh, the protective shields around the body? Or has, is, there, is there a relationship between uh, the protective shields and the Negong? Or is it just something different? Or, uh, or am I just a little bit confusing the names? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, sometimes we call it in Western energy practice, we call it the auric field. And that's uh, related to the immune system is basically we are electrical beings and we are electrical being. There's moving particles very, very fast inside of us. Actually, the scientists say that uh, the body is mostly empty space. It just, it just looks like solid because it, the moving parts are so vast and they're creating electricity. That's why you cannot like you touch and you feel like there's a boundary, but it's really mostly empty space. If you kind of like take the body and, and, and if you want to know how much matter there is, it's just a size of a pinhead. It's very small. So it's mostly, it's like a fan. You see a fan and it moves so fast and it thinks like it's solid. And that vibration creates energy. And that energy is not only the physical energy that we see with our naked eye, it's also the energy that that fan kind of creates. There's electricity. So there's energy field the field of electricity that you can actually feel when we sometimes do this, we can actually feel the energy of our, of our, that electrical, <laughs> that electrical charge. We kind of feel it with our body, with our, with our hands, we can feel it. And we can sometimes feel uh, the type of energy, you know, sometimes you feel like a person is angry or is <laughs> happy just by even not seeing them. You can feel from the side, some, some people develop it over time when you practice a lot of Qigong or meditation. You can feel even the quality or the strength of the energy. So the quantity of, your, of, your, of that field would be, would be based on your health and, uh, and the quality, uh, that energy, how the vibration moves through, through this area. So there's no really, um, it's not really connected to, um, to to nay gong or nay dan or why dan in that way it's just a it's just an invisible energy that we have and there's a way to increase it when we feeling good when the energy flows well in our body when we have good breathing practices where our immune system is strong that energy yeah you can wake up any every morning and and feel the chi between your hands or in your body and you feel sometimes it's, it's going to be kind of like small and sometimes you feel oh wow i have a lot of energy and if you'll do like a lot of good breath practices or you feel very good that day you'll see that this increases that field around you increases so it's really and you know standing postures are very good in developing that energy and and just overall practice of gratitude deep breathing you know all the inner smile being active in your body you know, physical health would, would really, you'll emit much more of that energy. And there's specific uh, esoteric practices in, uh, in, in Qigong and, and it's uh, to actually develop stronger field. Yeah, I've, I've done them for a while. It's very interesting uh, that you actually develop more electricity, you emit more electricity. So there's a way to do that and uh, some of these practices are, are more like what you said, are Nagong practices. So you stand for a long time. A lot of these practices are very boring practices, actually. <laughs> you stand for a long time and, and, and you cultivate a lot of energy. And, you know, if you stand a lot of time, you're going to start shaking, right? Like, like start shaking from all the energy. And you think, I'm so tired. My arms are so tired. But you just keep it, keep it, keep it. And, you feel like a lot of energy then you put your arms down and feel like you just, your chi is increasing. There's that, there's different practices, the breathing, there's tensing the muscles, there's different practices to strengthen the auric field around you. 
but and, and they can be either neigong or they can be uh qigong they can be movement mm. and they can be uh like exercise would do it exercise would really if you exercise and you're feeling good and you're connecting with gratitude and this you'll feel check out your chi your auric feel you can check it after exercising it's very powerful wherever you kind of feeling down or slouching on the couch every day and uh, doing a lot of meditation, but it's not, um, yeah, the, yeah it, so it's, 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 does that make sense? Yes, yes. So by, so by doing only Neigong practices, you can also strengthen your energy fields. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It depends what it is. There's actually yeah. exercises that are designed for that. Okay. You know, they're designed to increase your, your energy, energy field. And it has to do, a lot of them are more like, has to do with either tension, muscular tension, or uh, in, in stillness, of course, because Nei Gong is all stillness, or just holding posture, holding posture, different posture. That would, that would do it too. Uh, so breath uh, and holding posture in Nei Gong and Qi Gong, uh, yeah, you, your Qigong, if you had a good energy practice, a good Qigong practice, you will feel like you feel vital. You'll actually feel it internally and it'll, 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 it'll respond itself to your energy field. Um, and again, if you think about it, our energy, if you think about our body as an electrical being, if you have blockages somewhere, that would create stagnant Qi, you know? And then there'll be less energy emitted from that area, right? When you have a flow of energy, everything is open. You're stretching, you're doing movement, you're, you're moving the body. Then in a, in a very, in, with a lot of breath practice, with, you know, and they feel, oh, wow, I have a lot of energy. And also it depends on your, the, you know, like you, when you feel your energy, it increases. It's very interesting. When you are in your body, when you are embodied, actually, and you feel your energy, you acknowledge it, it will increase. It's like anything, you're putting your mind into something and the energy goes there. You're thinking negative thoughts and sooner or later you'll become depressed. You'll see the news and, you know, it'll, it'll go that way. And so like, <laughs> and this is how Nei Gong, internal practice, where do we put our attention every moment of your life? Or how do we breathe? You know, every, every single you know, and be conscious about what you're doing. Uh, that's, that's, that's kind of like what Nei Gong is teaching us. It's more like what we're doing with our mind, what we're doing with our breath, what we're doing with our heart, you know, things like that. And if you only focus, for example, on your negative feelings or only focus on your anger, does it also become bigger? Yes, of course. Yes, yes. Of course, yeah, of course. <laughs> I mean, you can, you can, you can uh, focus on in, in terms of like uh, trying to understand it, right? With curiosity. So that's a very positive way to connect with negativity is to be curious about it. To be curious about it, not to be like, hey, what, I, I wonder what happened to me. What, why did I respond that way? Like, why am I feeling that way? Like... <laughs> Uh, like being curious about something that you feel that is negative is, 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 is good. Uh, but usually the mind is uh, telling herself a story. Yeah. So there's a story, there's a thought that there's a thought that caused that emotion or caused that. Yeah. There's a mindset. And uh, it's interesting that your mind is generating that thought. It's not that it's good or bad. It's just, it just happens. And, you know, how can we shift that? And that's really working with consciousness, like with mindset. Like, is that true? You know, so there's, this is going to, what we're going to do in the, in the third workshop, uh, emotional resilience course uh, workshop on uh, September. Uh, and we kind of like think about what is the intention underneath the negative emotion? What, what is underneath it? And that's, that's, that's actually good. That's actually a good way to, come into, um, so it's not about putting attention, putting attention in a certain way. Uh, you know, if you come from a curiosity and for a, a quest, and that would, that would, that would be great. Uh, but if we are keep uh, kind of like telling ourselves the same story that caused the same emotion, 
then that would be like putting oil on the flame. So if like, let's say anger is, as we see it as fire and thinking about the, you know, like, oh, this guy did that to me. And then you keep uh, reiterating that same thought, you'll get the same emotion, but you'll kind of multiply it basically. So, so how can we look at things differently? How can we be curious about what, why, <laughs> like, uh, you know, uh, bring curiosity in a different way that would be, that would be beneficial actually. Um, uh, but what we say in Qigong in uh, more like Asian traditions, uh, there's a lot of body consciousness, you know, we say that we actually uh, uh, digest emotions through the body. And if you bring them too much to the brain, they're just going to create more havoc. <laughs> so it's really hard to um, to, to, to conceptualize from a cerebral place. It's just, it's, it's too, it's too much. So coming to the body, digest it, treat it as energy. And we're going to, we're going to kind of have uh, a workshop on, on it. Uh, the emotional resilient workshop, but, but see the emotion as a sensation, as a felt sense, as an experience. And when you connect with it that way, it can actually, be digested and metabolized and move move away and and um so that's kind of a little bit about that mm -hmm. but yeah of course if we put attention into <laughs> the negative it will increase if you put attention into the positive it'll, it'll increase so this is how we how there's an ongoing practice right mm -hmm. Yes, I have one more question about uh, mm -hmm. ne so ne it's called negong. Um, if you if you don't feel like um, doing a lot of physical uh, exercise in the evening, for example, so you can just sit in on the couch and do negong and strengthen yourself. Is that possible? Uh yeah, you could st strengthen yeah. yourself with internal practices. Yeah, of course, of course. Uh, strengthen yourself with internal practices. Of course, uh, like Without putting me. putting your mind in some somewhere that is beneficial. Like Nagon could be, it's a stillness practice that it's you moving the energy. It's either and it's either breath breath practice very powerful to mm -hmm. change your mind to change your emotion. You can actually change the way you're thinking just by doing breath practices or putting your minds on, on gratitude or, or thinking about something good that happened. You don't have to physically move the body in order to create, uh, to create um, you know, strength. Strength in the physical body in a Neigong way would be postural, postural or tensing. You know, it has to, if you want to create physical strength, from Neigong, it would be a it would be a, a postural, like a standing postures, mm -hmm. or specific ten tension. You know, people do the different tension. I don't teach that so much. I I do the 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 holding posture. Um, that that's cultivating a lot of strength. Actually, holding posture is very good for immune system. Holding posture is very good for bone strength. So that that would be holding posture, and. Um, Tensing is very good for releasing stress, tense and release, trans, tense and release, and, and in a certain way. So you can definitely create physical strength from Nei Gong practice. Uh, and and, and the, other, the other side of Nei Gong practice is, of course, what we do with our attention and intention, what we do with our breath. So that could create a lot of health. Breath is amazing. I, I invite everybody to join this workshop on August 9th, so in a couple of weeks. It's going to be really, really, uh, you know, for me, that would be the first step uh, to teach, to teach, to entry to Qigong would be that, that, uh, that workshop. It's called the, the, you know, lung health. It's, it's about lung and immune system. That's the first thing I teach people. It's a very, that's the fastest, easiest way to heal yourself. Is by is by uh, is by connecting with the lung, and we're gonna talk about that. You know, I um, I just saw so many people online now doing different types of breathing techniques and all that, and I wanted to teach a Taoist from Taoist perspective, very very powerful, thousands of years old. So um, 
hopefully you guys join me. I know I know some of you are already. So that that answer your question, Bart? Yes, yes, yes. And in the beginning, I was a little bit confused with the two words, way and nay. Yeah, uh, yeah. Why Dan? Why? Why? Yeah. Dan, Dan is elixir. A Y is Y is W A I. That's external. And nay is internal. So external elixir and internal elixir. It's just what you get, the elixir that you get from working with your psyche and your breath and the elixir that you're gaining by working with the physical body. And the combination is really Qigong. And, and if we say nei gong, is, it's like nei dan. It's just a different, it's, it's working. It's, gong is, is a work. Dan is elixir. It's just a different way. It's, yeah. Both of them are pretty much the same. But uh, what I wanted to kind of clarify that there's no really... Qigong and Nei Gong, it's not just two different practices. It's, it's now, I, I believe it's a little bit more understandable for everybody that watching the recording later and for, for, for you guys. So that, that's, a, that's a fun and that's really the secret of self-healing is a combination of the two. Of course, you can work only with physical body and get a lot of benefit. Of course, you can work only with the internal energy meditations and get a lot of benefit too. But the combination of the two is, is Qigong and, and it, has, it has a lot of benefit. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Edward, could you hear us? Ah, oh, we cannot hear you now. Okay, because you're unmuted. It's okay. <laughs> yes, okay. re-enter. Okay, good. Okay, awesome. Thank you guys so much for being here in the Qi Talk. Um, so uh, let's do a little bit of closing meditation. Let's warm up our hands. We warm up the hands is the end of the meridian. So it's very powerful. Nice. And let's center it in the belly today. So let's rub the belly and feel the heat on the belly. So when you rub the belly, you rub it like slowly. So you can feel the heat of the hand on the belly and see if you can draw the heat. Yeah, so now leave it in one place on the belly, like on the navel. Leave the hands on the navel and feel the heat of the hands on the navel. And see if you can draw the heat inside with your mind. So what you do is you put your mind a little bit inside, few inches inside and take all the good chi yeah, the hands, the warmth of the hands is the warmth of the heart. Yeah, the heart meridian flow into the hands. So you can think about it as a heart loving energy meeting your digestive system, meeting your energy center. And you're drawing the love from the hand, the warmth from the hand into the digestive system and smile into this area. Yeah, so right here, that end meditation is pure Nei Gong. Yeah, because we're not moving. We're just feeling and connecting with our mind and heart and breath. So draw the energy inwardly. And just feel, come with, a, with an attitude of love and curiosity and openness into this area, into the digestive system, into the Dantian. Nice. All right, guys, let's open the hands, open the eyes. Ah, nice. We really went over time here, but Bart, I'm so excited you came and asked all these questions. You can come anytime and you're invited to come every, every, uh, every session. Uh, thank you guys. And I'll see you in class. We'll have a class tomorrow. Good night, Qigong, 730. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Bye.